great day at 9 a.m. I'm Nicole Malepa. Scott Haney here. Nice to see you. <laughs> Happy Election Day. Happy Election Day to you, yeah. too. I can't wait. I'm voting at 450. I love how you have it all planned yep, out. Yeah, uh, because I'm going to the gym from 3.30 to 4.30. Oh, By the time it takes me to drive from Berlin to Hartford, it'll be 20 minutes, and then I will cast my vote at 4.50. Perfect. Yep. I'm voting sometime tonight. I don't know when. And the weather's going to be great. That's great. Mm -hmm. I know. That's all we, I mean, obviously we hope that you get out regardless of the weather, but sometimes it's more difficult for some people. We understand, so. We understand, it's so we're glad so it's going to cooperate. Oh, yeah, we so had that morning rain this morning. It was pouring. I know, but it, it packed up pretty yeah, quick, packed, right? Yeah, it moved. I was like, whoa. Yeah. It was we like, booking. <laughs> Move over. All right, Channel 3 is your campaign headquarters, and we're breaking down the biggest races of the day across our state. Yeah, one mayoral race has been mired in controversy after two people were recorded stuffing envelopes into a ballot box in Bridgeport. Hmm. Channel 3's Olivia Schuler is live there with what's happening today and what the turnout has been like so far. What are you seeing there, Olivia? Nicole and Scott, good morning. Well, the rain is starting to part here in Bridgeport, and more people are coming to these different polling sites. And I'll tell you, we caught up today with Mayor Joe Gannum and the candidate for mayor, John Gomes, and they told us what they're hoping for if elected as mayor. Now, both Gomes and Gannum see eye to eye on several initiatives. However, Gomes says he believes Mayor Gannum isn't reducing taxes in the right way. It's a hot topic we spoke to with residents this morning. One thing I've tried to be a hallmark on is keeping taxes down in this city. It's critically important. Hiring a new police chief with a focus on public safety, funding for education. To do is make a government that's more efficient and accountable, consistent economic growth, to fund education. And at the same time, we have to reduce taxes the correct way. Not the way it's being done now, which is a gimmick. Now, getting to Election Day has come with its twists and turns here in Bridgeport. A judge ordered a new primary after ballot tampering was caught on camera by a city official and Gannam supporter. The Secretary of State is still determining how to proceed, which should be determined in less than a week. Now, Gomes tells us this morning he will drop the lawsuit if he wins. Outside the Democratic candidates, Republican David Hertz and Independent Lamont Daniels are also on the ballot for Bridgeport's mayor this primary. Now, an interim elections monitor is set up at several drop boxes throughout Bridgeport, and this is to make sure that this entire race is completely clean and there are no issues like we saw during that August primary. Now, the polls close at 8 o'clock tonight, and all the candidates we spoke to are reminding all of you at home to make sure you get out and cast your vote. Scott, Nicole, back to you. All right. Thanks, Olivia. Yeah, thanks, Olivia. Important stuff. A lot of people were wondering what's going on with Election Day there in Bridgeport, but now you know. It's going to be a, uh, 8 o'clock. I'm tuned into Channel 3 I know. and the wax. I can't wait to see. Uh, and we're not sleeping then. <laughs> exactly. Now, in addition to the mayoral races across our state, including in Hartford, voters in several communities will be deciding on different ballot questions. Mm -hmm. So there are a few of them here uh, that we want to preview for you. There's a proposal in Ansonia for a new school. Middletown is asking for money to fund a new boat house. Voters in New Haven have to decide whether or not to increase the mayor's term from two to four years. And Simsbury has an issue about recreational marijuana sales. So you can find links to ballots, candidate information, and so much more ahead of casting your vote all on the Channel 3 app. All right, let's talk weather. Let's check out that first alert live radar. We are scanning dry. Woohoo! As we just saw from Olivia, had raindrops on roses and un on her umbrella this morning in her live shots. I didn't see any whiskers on kittens. Though. Yeah, but you see some brown paper packages tied up with string. Oh, those yeah. are some of my favorite things. Thank you. Uh, let's take you out and show you a future cast. It's first alert, future cast. Tomorrow's weather today. You'll notice the rain is gone and the clouds, they're still with us. They're going to hang tough along the shoreline until about 1 o'clock, and that's when everybody goes goes over to mostly sunny skies. You see that little line of cloud coverage up there at 3 o'clock? And then right there at 5 p.m., that's a cold front that's going to signify change for us in terms of the cooler. It might touch off a couple of sprinkles, maybe a brief shower around 5 p.m., but it's insignificant, so it's not even hardly worth mentioning. And then tonight we're clear and we are colder. So get out there and enjoy today with partly to mostly sunny skies on the way. Temperatures will make it into the mid-60s. And then tomorrow, cooler but sunny. And then Thursday, a morning rain bout with maybe some mixing in the northwest hills. Temperatures will only top out in the low 50s for Wednesday and Thursday. And it gets even cooler for the upcoming weekend, Nicole. I know. <sighs> we have a bounce house at a friend's house this weekend, and I'm just dreading it. Layers. That's all <laughs> I got to say is layers. George, poor George is going to be in his winter winter oh. suit, head to, head to toe. Yeah, he'll be comfortable. Don't get though. sick. <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, I really did it.
and Hurley we trust. Hello, Hurley. Hello, Hurley. Hello, Hurley. The defending <laughs> NCAA champs raising a banner and starting the season strong. UConn men's basketball team dominated against Northern Arizona last night, winning 95 to 52. And the sellout crowd, <laughs> there was a sellout crowd and attendance record at Gamble Pavilion. UConn will be at home again for the next game against Stonehill Saturday at noon. Yeah, I think it was like over 10,000 people or yeah, something. Yeah, over 10,000 people. Isn't that amazing? That's terrific. And then the UConn women will be opening the season tomorrow night in stores. They play Dayton and we'll be hearing from head coach Gina Oriyama and some of the players after practice today. And you can find out how they're feeling ahead of the first game tonight on Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Tip off for the home opener is set for 7 p.m. Basketball season is so exciting, isn't it? Is, it? it is really exciting. You know, I really wasn't into it. And then I went to two big east schools. I went yeah, to St. John's and right. I went to Syracuse. Never went to any of the games. You and didn't? then No, I just I just wasn't into it. That yeah, is right I never went. fingertips. I, mean, I, right I was there. in uh, the Carrier Dome in Syracuse yeah. two days the whole time I was there. And it was for my graduation from my school on Saturday and graduation for the university on Sunday. It's the only time I've ever been in, in the Carrier Dome. Okay. I never saw a game. Why? I don't know. You just know. didn't want to go? Yeah, I didn't want to right. go. <laughs> didn't you go to school with Chris Mullins, too? Yeah. Yeah. He was in my classes. That's right. Because yeah. my dad was just a little bit above you. That's right. Yep. At St. Yep. John's. Yep. So funny. Uh, but yeah, no, go. we're exciting, excited, and it is exciting already, you yes. know, especially with the men's win. It's like, all right, UConn, go. Go. Go, Huskies. All right, come <laughs>